Could the Broncos trade for Saquon Barkley? Let's discuss this idea I saw floated out there on the World Wide Web. On today's Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports, Matthew Peterson here with a potential holdout looming between Saquon Barkley and the New York Giants. Maybe Denver could swoop in and trade for the former number two overall pick out of Penn State. So, some background information on Barkley. He is still, as I film this right now, Friday afternoon, has not signed his 10 plus million dollar franchise tag. So the way this works is if he does not sign his franchise tag, it's a little bit murky. He's not on the Giants roster, but he's also not a free agent because the Giants have his rights. So he can't just get out of signing it and then go sign somewhere else. It doesn't work that way. But the report that came out was that he could threaten to hold out after the contract deadline, which is July 17th, this Monday, 4 o'clock Eastern. So after 4 o'clock Eastern, Monday, July 17th, Saquon Barkley and the New York Giants cannot come to an agreement on a long-term contract. That is the deadline. If they do not get a deal done before then, either Barkley does not play football this upcoming season, uh, CC Le'Veon Bell of sorts, or, uh, not quite the same though, but still you get the point, or uh, he signs a contract, uh, the franchise tag, and he plays for the Giants under the franchise tag, which is probably going to happen. But we've seen some of these holdouts get a little crazy before, and they end up getting traded. That would not be a first. Now, a report came out from the New York Post that Barkley turned down nearly $20 million in a guaranteed contract proposal for the Giants. Barkley called cap on this. He said this was BS. I'm not sure if they're playing games, if we've got some smoke screens going on out there, but that is sort of the background on Barkley and the Giants. Now let's kind of bring in Denver into the mix here because I think Barkley is going to have a good 2023 season. He's come back well from that ACL tear he suffered two years ago at this point. And I think he can still be a very good top five type running back for the next three to four seasons. Now we know father time is pretty good against running backs, but Derrick Henry's 29 years old. He's still one of the better running backs in the league to say the least. So I will add that I don't want Denver to make this move. I know this sounds boring, and who doesn't want to go get superstar players? And Barkley can be a superstar player, but I do not want to see Denver give up the assets, give up the picks that it would cost to get Saquon Barkley and or some players, and then give him a big contract at a very pivotal time in this team's history where we have a huge question mark. Will Russell Wilson bounce back? And if the answer is no to that question, you're going to have a bad football team with a lot of big contracts that will be tough to get out of, and it's not going to make for a reset or rebuild very easy because you'll be short assets. You gave up picks to get Saquon Barkley and your short cap space because you got these big contracts to guys when you're not really in a perfect win-now window. Now, Barkley is a good football player, right? Last year, he put up 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns. Average 4.4 yards a carry. That's good. Could be better, but not bad by any means. You want to be above four yards. If you dip below four yards, you've got a problem. Um, and we know that he took some time to recover from that uh, tough ACL tear in 2020. He was a shell of himself in 2021. But last year with the G-Men, Barkley and that defense motored them to a playoff win. Former NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year in 2018. Two straight 1,000-yard seasons before that ACL tear. And now there is this guy named Javante Williams, and he kind of throws a wrench into this because if Denver didn't have Javante Williams, we could really get around this idea a lot better, right? You don't have a running back. Some AJ P. Ryan and Tony Jones are your only backs. What do you have to lose? You might as well go get Barkley. Well, what you have to lose is you have Javante Williams. Are you ready to punt down Javante Williams? Because if you trade for Saquon Barkley or Josh Jacobs for that matter, you're kind of ending the Javante Williams era in Denver before it even got started. And this was a player that George Payton was super high on. In his rookie season, nearly put up 1,000 yards despite splitting carries. Think about that. 903 yards, I think he had, year one, when taking 50% of the carries. Makes you wonder, with a workload like 75% of the carries, he could be a 1,400-yard rusher. Now, fan cited throughout a trade idea that I wanted to float your way, and this is their idea. Saquon Barkley for Javante Williams and a 2024 fourth-round pick. 
Denver's already without some picks next year. Remember, they had to give up some assets to the New Orleans Saints to get Sean Payton. So you'd be moving on from another selection and Javante Williams in exchange for the former number two overall pick. So put your GM hats on and let me know, would you do this trade? Give me your thoughts in the comment section. Why for yes or N for no to keep it nice and simple? Would you do this trade? For me, I would take Barkley over Williams if all else is equal. But the thing is, it's not all else is equal. Because you don't just trade for Saquon Barkley. Like, I'm not going to stand here and say, Javante Williams is going to be a better player than Saquon Barkley. He might end up being one. But for now, I'm going to err on the side of Barkley. But you got to extend Barkley. It's not just trading for Saquon Barkley. You also got to extend him, right? It's twofold. And I'm not quite there to extend Saquon Barkley. The beauty of getting a running back in the first round is a very talented player who you could have under control for the first five years of their career and not have to pay an absorbent amount. But when you trade for a running back when their rookie contract is closing, you move, you lose out on... 75% of the fun of getting a Saquon Barkley, which is you only had to pay them in their rookie contract. It's not that fun to pay them the contract that they definitely deserve because they are very good players that are underpaid. Talk, talk to Austin Eckler about that. But if Barkley got traded, I wouldn't be shocked if a team like Denver or anyone else for that matter inked him to a four-year, $60 million extension. This would not make him the highest paid running back on average. That still goes to Christian McCaffrey. But you'd be paying him $15 million a season, probably guarantee $24 million at least. I mean, a team doesn't move for Barkley unless they plan to extend him because they see a long-time future in him. And I just think half, more than half of the fun of getting a player like Saquon Barkley is when they're on their rookie contract, not when you have to pay them, right? I think that's where some couch GMs get confused. Don't draft running backs. No, you can draft a running back. The issue is when you got to pay the running back. And if you don't think someone in the first round is worthy of five years on your team, then that's a fair point. But if you are entering a win-now window for the next five years, you might want that guy. The worst case scenario is you give up picks for Barkley, you get stuck with a big contract, and you suck again. Because I know that I'm optimistic about this team turning things around. A five-win performance last year, I think they could add on four more wins and go nine and eight as kind of the floor, and that's a bit uh, ambitious. But what if, just bear with me here for a moment, Russell Wilson does not bounce back. Like Sean Payton doesn't fix Russ. And this is the Russ we unfortunately have. Well, if that's the case, if I tell you that's a fact before we even pursue the idea of trading for Barkley, does that change your opinion? Because I know personally, if I don't have a franchise quarterback, I don't think it's a good idea to give up picks and give up big contracts to a running back that's just going to be like Christian McCaffrey and the Panthers, right? A really good player on a really bad team that ultimately Carolina has to trade away. And the Panthers traded him away as he was in the middle of his prime. If Denver has to trade away Barkley in two years because they're not going to win and they don't like this big contract, oh, you're not getting what you paid for, right? I mean, if you trade Barkley two years from now, Whatever it costs you to get Barkley in the first place, it's going to cost you way less for another team to get Saquon Barkley. Now, with that being said, we are the hub for Broncos rumors, whether it's trade buzz, free agency, training camps right around the corner. So make sure to subscribe for free content all year long. Now, I should mention that Sean Payton, the new guy in charge, has gone down this road before. It's actually good timing because our producer today, Trace Gerard, is a Saints fan. And he'll testify that uh, Sean Payton, one heck of a coach, Alvin Kamara, one heck of a player. And this contract that Alvin Kamara got, the extension, not bad. But I wonder if there is a good chunk of the pie down in the Big Easy that would like to hit the undo button on it. Because Kamara hasn't been a bad player since he got that five-year, $70 million contract extension. But usually when you give someone $75 million, the hope is that their best days are yet to come, right? That's why you're paying them all that money. You could make a good argument that Alvin Kamara was better before he got the contract extension than since he got it. He hasn't been bad since he got the extension, but he's averaging almost one yard less, right? His touchdowns have gone down. He's got less yards. He's got more carries. He's still been a very productive player in New Orleans, 
but to the tune of $75 million? Not really. Now, there are some fade running backs that kind of fade after they get the bag, they get the money, and they cash in, and they kind of check out a little bit. And then you get guys that are unicorns. Derrick Henry, uh, Nick Chubb, players that are in the midst of their second contract and look like they're almost only getting better by the season. I think Barkley could be in that unicorn kind of camp because remember, when he was coming out of Penn State, I mean, his thighs were bigger than some people's torsos. Like, that's just how much of a genetically engineered freak he was. So Barkley very well could have nine good NFL seasons, which in this day and age as a running back is pretty hard to come by. But that's a risky bet to make because if he doesn't, and if Wilson's not the guy, this could be trouble. And that's where I'm just like, call me a coward. I just don't want to go down that path because what's the alternate? Take by Javante Williams. Since when did Javante Williams suck? Yeah, he's not as good as Saquon Barkley probably, but you don't have to give him a big contract. You don't have to give up picks to get him. You already have him. You already used a premium pick on him. How about you stick by the guy? So let me know. Would you trade for Saquon Barkley just in general? T for trade, P for pass. Whether that means you have Javante Williams and Barkley in the same backfield. Just, uh, you know, open landscape here. Give me your thoughts in the comment section. Time for our summer hot takes. It is a high of 86 degrees today in Denver. So that lands us in that hot sand take. You know what I mean? Where you're running from the water to your beach towel or something and the sand's hot and you're like uh, doing that little meme of, what's the meme? I'm forgetting it anyway. But uh, the little guy is running around the sand on his tippy toes. But hot sand take, you all know what I mean at this point. My hot sand take is this. Russell Wilson will not be the worst quarterback in the AFC West. And I know that sounds like big time loser talk, but there's only four teams and half of them are occupied with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert. So right off the bat, it feels like you're only battling for third. And I think Jimmy Garoppolo will be the worst team, uh, worst quarterback in the AFC West this year. Russell Wilson will be better than Jimmy G. That is my hot sand take. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll catch up later.